Hi, welcome to Latino Nomad. I'm so sorry, Derek here has me laughing. <laughs> welcome to Latino Nomad. On this episode of Latino Nomad, I'm super excited to introduce you to Derek, who is a film producer and book author. But just to recap yesterday's interview, we interviewed with Michelle, who is a social worker who has found a way to disconnect herself, well, without really disconnecting herself, but to take time for herself in order to be able to continue doing the work she does with the children, manage her family life, and just overall reaching her individual goals. We learned about mentoring with her as far as taking time to just make gratitude, take time to be grateful and reflect on the things that you've done. So catch that video on our YouTube channel and you can access that via our latinanomad.com website. But with that said, thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank for you saying for yes to this. My pleasure. <laughs> my pleasure. I'm really happy to be here with you guys. I'm really excited. So before we go anywhere, I just want to uh, let you guys know that this is the new book that Derek just launched. It's called The Book of Kringle. He's going to tell us more about it, but right now we are selling it on the Dare to Be NYC website. You'll see the links uh, on the post we'll provide it. But with this book, he is actually dedicating 50% of the proceeds to all the homeless children that we work with. So thank you for that. My pleasure. So before we get into the book, let's talk about your career prior to this. What it was that you did and how that's transitioned you over. Well, I've always been a writer, director, and producer. Um, I, I, I write because I have a lot of stories in my brain, and I direct because that's the only way I can bring them to life, and I produce out of sheer necessity to get them to come alive. But um, uh, it's something that I've been doing ever since I was about 16 years old. I started writing. Uh, I didn't start producing or directing until I was in my 20s, but uh, um, I have all this inner monologue in my head, so I wanted to bring them to life, you know? Awesome. So how was that? So you've been doing this since you were 16. Did you start setting goals that early, or how did that? Well, you know, I believe what you're meant to do kind of presents itself to you, and it, and it, uh, it feels familiar to you, even if you're not very good at it at first. And um, I had... Uh, you know, uh, I started writing around 16 or 17 years old, and I had to actually kind of educate myself because I didn't do really well in school. And so writing was something that I would do to, and I would look up words, and I would thesaurus with me, remember thesauruses? <laughs> and I would be able to, uh, you know, develop my thoughts that way. And I see these pictures in my brain, so I didn't actually know you could be a director. I just thought they were, I just, just had these images in my brain. So just by writing them and then finding out as I got up and I wanted to participate in the world, as an artist, being a director and being a writer just seemed to fit what naturally was already happening for me. You know, it felt like even even my early work wasn't very good, but it it felt right for me. So, uh, does that answer your question? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I got warm. One second. Where is he? Shouts and it gets freezing, and he still gets warm. Yes. I get so. Warm. But, okay, so let's talk about how, you know, you said that you do set goals for the yes. things that you set up. What's that process like for you when you set goals? Well, see, we all think we have things in our minds, and, uh, uh, um, and, if, you, and if you don't write them down, uh, you think that's as, as far as you can go. So you, you really need to write things down, for me, uh, so I can see it in, and put it in front of me. And so then, therefore, I can see further after that. So it's like, it's like a first draft. So... Uh, so that's good. It's the same for, for your for your goals. You have a first draft for your goals. You have this is what I want to achieve, and you really don't know how to get there. You don't know what to do yet. So you really should plan it ahead of yourself. Write it all down. Get some sense of what it is that you're trying to go through, and then you start like a book, like like writing a story. You accept this is your life, your life story. As you go down, as you write it down, you go through the list. You start seeing the holes. You start seeing well. You start seeing the opportunities, you start seeing all the different possibilities that could happen as you write down your plan. So if you don't have a plan, I, I think you, sometimes you just are shooting in the dark. You know, a lot of people say, I got passion, I could do it. Well, that's great. What, what disciplines are you applying to your, your passions? Because passions without discipline is, uh, can be a lot of frivolous energy. People make themselves feel all good, but it's really the, the, the accomplishments of your goals that really fulfill you. Not just the passion. The passion that's just the passion lasts for you know a certain amount of time, but yeah. uh, you know. And then it could end up being really costly and time-consuming yeah. if you're not planning it out in detail, right? Absolutely. So. It really planning your life is no different than writing a book because people think that no one writes in first draft. You really have to get through it, and so you have and so you have to keep working at it. You have to keep uh, refining it, just like a book. It, you know, you, you can't just think, I'm a genius because I wrote something down. 
you know, it, there, once you do that, you really do see deeper and deeper into it, and, and just like your life. Mm -hmm. you know, so if you set goals for yourself, you may think, I want to be a ballerina. And so you start studying ballerina, and then you start realizing that you're good at organizing, and you're good at, or you're good at this, and, you, and all of a sudden, life presents itself. You know, so too much planning could also hurt you as well because you want to be open to what is the natural thing for you. Yeah. I think that's so true. I, I have a friend of mine that he says all he ever does is plan and he's never executed. Yeah. So one thing that we spoke about in the first interview was execution is key. Yeah. You know, prepare yourself to the research, but then get ready to just make it happen. And that should be part of the plan. Mm -hmm. The part of the plan should be the plan should change if that's what happens. You should adaptability. Act, adaptability. That's why you're making a plan. So you just don't you head on a journey without really thought it out because right. and many people want to do things and they don't really realize okay what does that mean on a daily basis mm -hmm. like I want to be a writer well do you write every day <laughs> no. does it hurt when it when you know when you don't write or or, or do you know that process that's a muscle that you need to build and um, so it's a romantic notion to say I'm going to be this but by planning it out and you start seeing the, the pitfalls and the opportunities and either it's right for you or it's not and that's a way of testing the ground before you actually head towards something that might end up hitting a wall at some point, you know? And, and in some cases, like setting yourself as the expert in that field, right? That yeah. Until you're ready to execute. So like for some people, before you open up like, you know, some sort of service or venue, it's like start drawing in the clientele and everything else yeah. and establishing yourself as the expert that they want to go to That's right. eventually. So when you're ready to launch, it's like, Ready to go. I know with Jerry to be that's the way it was with us that we started with just one event and we just started doing more and then by the time we became a nonprofit everybody was on board. Yeah. Like, oh, you've been doing this for so long, it's yeah. like it makes sense. Well that's because you, you, you mastered the execution of one event and then you know it, that event was a microcosm for all the other things and so you became an expert with each little step first, you know, and that's yeah. uh, where a lot of people just say they want the whole cake. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like we're gonna rule the world, but you know, you gotta build an army. You have to do yeah. a whole bunch of stuff first. We get it know? all together. So true. Right. So, what do you think has been your biggest challenges when you know when setting your goals and trying to see them through? Oh, my biggest challenge is me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, the strange thing about the word ego is that people think that ego is a negative thing, but uh, in Greek. The word ego. Sorry, we have trucks passing by cleaning his sounds. It's one story. <laughs> but the word ego means a sense of self. And you can't, you can't, no champion ever said, I'm not going to do that and I can do that. He believed that's his ego. Allowed him to rise above himself. But ego is also a double, double edged sword. It does, it's, it's, a, it's a very uh, fragile thing. So the ego inside of me said, I'm going to become a great writer someday. But then the failure which is what accomplishments come through failures uh, that's a humbling experience and and that's something that you have to have empathy for yourself about and just to, to uh, say okay you're going to fail that's part of the process of, 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 of uh, doing it but uh, ego tends to can make you aim too high as well it can make it, you get too much ego you could hurt yourself because you could just do all types of things but without ego you accomplish nothing so learning that balance of uh, of who you are and who you want to be and who you actually are. You know, that, that's a, a life lesson in itself. You know, and I think the process, in finding that process, you find yourself and your career, I would think. That's awesome. So talk to me about your, you have them upside down. Or I do. <laughs> talk to me about your transition from a writer to, you know, doing the films and now the book author. Well, being a producer and a director, I, 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 my talent really is, is using other people's talents. It's like, oh, that's a great actor, that's a great, uh, uh, you know, director of photography. So, um, um, so it, I've learned that same trait of using other people's talents, which is, is what, how this book came together. You know, um, uh, as a director, I'm not even on the D list. I'm doing my third film coming up. Hopefully that helps my career. But, uh, <laughs> but as a book author and the people that I assembled, you know, this is an A-list book. I mean, I know, you have Mary Packard. Mary Packard is known for Winnie the Pooh and, and, and if you go on to Barnes & Noble and Google her name on there, you will find you know, all, uh, hundreds of books that of all top-notch books. Mm -hmm. And then the illustrator is a guy named David Wenzel who did The Hobbit and, and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Rain. Really fantastic. The, the, the designer has done work for all the big publishers, you know, Metropolitan Museum and so forth. So I put together a great team and so 
it's you're you're freer to be more creative when you have people that are in charge of their stations and uh, so it, but it was just like directing a movie in that respect because I wrote a concept and I and I and, and uh, I wrote the story but I needed to get it right for a kid and I'm not always the right person for something I fired myself many times <laughs> you serve the project see that's one of the things that people don't realize you're not serving yourself an idea is only good because there's it, it, it um, there's people that, that, that want to share in that idea. So you have to serve the idea most of the time, and you have to serve yourself to that. So having this book and this story in my mind, I put together the writers of, of people, and then I was allowed to just serve the concept and guide them along. But when you're dealing with much more talented people than you in a field that you've never done before, you better understand why they did that choice before you critique it. You know, oh, true. which was hard for me because I'm so opinionated, and as a director, I I'm used to telling people what to do. But I had this woman that has written hundreds of books. How am I going to tell her what to do? Yeah, like, what the hell are you? What the hell are you? So I had literally <laughs> had, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I had to actually understand why she would do something before I critique it, which only made me a much better artist. And I think that's huge because I think that's a big problem with you know people and their some people's management style. That they want to be able to go anywhere and not assess the situation. Yeah. They just want to impose like this is the way that I do it and how yeah, it no, needs no, to it, be done. And I think you serve an idea, so you 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 have to be whatever the idea is. If you if it's all about you, then the idea will be lacking something. You know, the, an idea is good because it's, it hits in sync with not only just you, it should hit in sync with the audience. It should hit in sync in the universe because and that means anyone who would witness it, good is good. And good is because it, it's universally good. So that means it's not you, it's the idea. So you have to get it to its refinement. It's like a dime that you've, you may have cut it out, but it needs to be polished, it needs to be, it, it's already there that you have to bring it out. You have to serve it. And the huge thing also that I'm hearing is that with when you're working with other people, being able to know that you're not the best for the specific role yeah. that you're trying to accomplish. Yeah. You know, like I always tell people, see what you're good at, what you excel at, and yeah. what you like to do also. Yeah. And then the things you don't like to do and you're not good at, let someone else do it. Absolutely. You know, let them take it on and Absolutely. equip them to do it, and then just, once they're empowered, let them go with it. And There's a specialist, you know, it's like running a, a ship, I'm like the captain. I'm not running the engine and the, uh, and the anchor, uh, you know, you need specialists that know how to work all those different areas, and I'm the guy that, uh, that, that runs them. <laughs> but they're doing their job, and you try to hire the best that you can to work with, and you get to be with the best intentions and the and the best talents, okay. which only makes you freer and more creative. So, how do you think that the the skills that you acquired as a film producer helped you with this? So, obviously, with the management, right? People directing yeah, people. It's you know uh, an, a, another uh, uh, segment to a good idea. It, it has to there has to be a market for it, and it has to be a budget, and it has to make sense. There's business. You know, uh, that's what I'm saying. People talk from passion. It's like, you know, is there a market for that? Is and, and th what budget? You can build pyramids if uh, if you don't have a budget. You can do whatever you want if you don't have discipline. But you will you really accomplish it? I don't know. Hang <laughs> <laughs> up the phone so that we won't get another call. <laughs> uh, so okay. Does Maybe, that make sense? Yeah, of course. So, and that's one of the pillars that we actually teach. It's about no matter what industry you're in, you should know some sort of business. Oh, yes. So, whether you're in film or... Well, people want things actors. to be fair. Yeah. People, people that don't know business go, it's not fair. What's fair is accomplishing your goal. You understand? To, to, to get to the finish line uh, takes a lot more compromise, a lot more uh, 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 hard work than you anticipate. We would love for everything to get fair. I remember when someone said to me, well, that's not what that person gets paid. I said, well, we can't afford that person. Ask them, they will work for less. Well, that's not fair. <laughs> well, what would, what would not be fair? Us just give up the project? You know, No, what's fair is, are you willing to do this? If you're not willing to, see you later. But this would to get to the end. To every time you finish, start something and get to the end, it changes you and it changes everything. And so setting goals and accomplishing them is, is, the, is the road to enlightenment. It's the road to finding out who you are. Dreaming, passions, that's all stuff that hit a wall without a goal. You yeah, know? there's a, a quote, and I think I just posted it the other day, was a, a plan, a goal without a plan is just a wish. Yeah, exactly right, <laughs> exactly just right. A wish, yeah, just know? a wish. I wish I was Elvis, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I love Elvis. Yeah, me too. Uh, so, okay. 
sorry, we have to trespass it again. Yeah. <laughs> it gives us a sense of tension and drama, yeah, sort like, of like the Al Pacino scene with the train <laughs> coming by right before we kill somebody. This is what you God when you're interviewing with these yeah. So, uh, okay, so did you set New Year's goals this year in 2016? And if so, what were they? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I got worse than that, but I hear the <laughs> Well, uh, did you? <laughs> well, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, yeah, I have plenty of goals this year. Um, I have some real personal goals that I'm that I'm going to achieve, but my my uh, business goals are um, no for 2017. I'm talking about 2016. What were your goals for? 2016? Oh, for 2016. Oh, I just finished a screenplay that's out to some major studios that we're waiting to hear. And that was on your list of goals. That was on my list of goals, and um, uh, I like aiming for something bigger than me. You know, like that's why we did a Santa Claus book, and and I, we bought the rights to uh, Edwin Torres. Uh, a, a, a story that did Carlitos way and and, and uh, we had to rewrite it all the way from scratch and almost rethink the idea but because I, I got it from him and, and I respect the man and he had so much integrity and, and, and talent and all of that that allows for me to aim higher than I anticipated because I want to I want to get into I want to we're competing with Brian De Palma in a movie called Q&A with stars Nick Nolte which is, is one of his works with Carlitos Ways, the directed by Brian De Palmer, the other one was by uh, Sidney Lumet. This one is by Brian De Palmer. So now we're making a third uh, film that's part of that lineage, and that scary, you know, yeah. to, to go get Sidney Lumet, Brian De Palmer, Al Pacino, Nick Nolte. I mean, but my ego, <laughs> it's like, no, I got my that. ego say I'm going to go for it, and, yeah. and and I believe that we can do it. So that, but to get there it took uh, like, like ten drafts. You know, I mean, it really took a long time. And, but uh, you accomplished the goal that you set for. Damn yeah. right we did. Right. Yeah, you know, it, put it there. It became, it's better than what I anticipated, and, and it's what I wanted. Awesome. And, and the only way we got there was by humbling ourselves, um, uh, getting all the critiques we can, all the honest information. We want to know what's wrong with something, because uh, I, don't, I don't want any illusion that I think I'm a genius, and then all of a sudden it's crap. So we want to have all those holes... And when you plug the holes and you, and you figure out the ways, it, it was a huge accomplishment because it's, it's efficient, it's smart, it's clean, and it fits in that genre. Awesome. Yeah. What other goals have you set for yourself, and did you accomplish them, or? Yes, I've accomplished uh, 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 all of my goals. Uh, I've been living on a cloud for many years, and I just wanted to get some more clarity in my life, and I'm starting to get there now, you know, awesome. yeah, which is nice to do. Cool. So what is in for 2017 for you? What goals have you set forth for yourself? Well, you know, I would like to be an enlightened soul. <laughs> and instead, I, I feel kind of, you know, still figuring that stuff out. There's a part of me that just like to surrender. I've been doing things for all these years. I do love. I'd like to be love. I, I, I do all these different things. I need to learn how to surrender. There's a strength in surrendering. You know, I guess I would like to learn how to meditate because I've learned to surrender that way. You know what I mean? That kind of... So sure. more like building your inner core. Like your I'd strength. like to build my inner core. All these years, uh, when I was a young man, I worked out a lot because I, you know, it was like I wanted to conquer the world, and I didn't know what direction to go into. At least I could lift those weights and get stronger. And and then from 22 to now, I'm going to be 48 in February. It was all brain. I wanted to be a great writer. So now I, I, I want balance again. It's like a Jedi, you know. <laughs> I, I finally I want my brain to be in order, not in my, and my body. I want that balance. So I'm trying to at that point in my life, and I think that I could work with ease now because I I figured out a bunch of stuff. So now instead of just doing, I just want to apply it instead of just doing it all. You know what I mean? Like yeah. with, with intensity, 